So your to-do list as parents, take an interest in your kids. Okay? Cooperate in their parents, in, in their parenting. Catch them being good. That's one of my uh, favorite expressions. You want to catch them being good. If you have a busy, busy kid, okay, and they're two years old and they're up to their eyeballs in everything every second of the day, and they actually sit down and play nicely with their sister for two minutes, most natural thing in the world is to collapse in a chair, get a book, and have a coffee, right? But in fact, what you need to do is go, well, I really like the way you're playing with your sister right now. And you worry, am I going to break the spell? Well, you might a little bit. Okay? But actually, the message they get is, hey, mom or dad kind of watched me do that kind of stuff. I got their attention. Okay? Three to one, I say, if, you, if, if you're giving consequences or you're... Uh, you are redirecting them or something, make sure that you give a lot of positives. Many more positives uh, than, than, and I won't call them negatives, but just than, than redirecting statements. So I said it's not a democracy, but they want to have a, a voice in things. You want to model coping. Okay? I actually am a fairly calm person, and I can get in the zone sometimes where I, where you, I, I surprise even myself. Um, by, by being, you know, not, not getting ruffled about stuff that would other, otherwise ruffle me. Um, but I'm also human, and you know, I remember one time just being so frustrated driving. I, this is before I was married, even. And, and uh, uh, not that being married made me unfrustrated. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to clarify that. Because <laughs> it's on tape. I'll be home shortly. Um, but, but no, I was driving, and I was, you know, and I was swearing and cursing and stuff, because there's something somebody had done, and I thought, what am I doing? Like, this is, first of all, this isn't who, who I am or who I want to be, um, you know, and it's not that important. Do I really want to, you know, wreck my day because somebody cut me off, or someone in front of me didn't wait their turn at a four-way stop sign or something like that? You know, like, I mean, honestly, I had to, you know, kind of do a gut check and realize, you know, you know it's not worth it. And so if we're driving with our kids in the back seat and we start flying off the handle about this, guess what they're watching? They don't need to be taking notes. Okay? If we want them to, to be calm and to be respectful, particularly during, during crisis or, or conflict, what is it that we're modeling for them? Right. Talk. All those subjects that are hard to talk about, talk about them as soon as possible. Go home and wake your child up if they're asleep tonight. Say, I want to talk about, about my sexuality. <laughs> um, but honestly, do you want to talk about this stuff? Cyberbullying, mental illness, self-harm, suicide. Asking the question, never put it in anybody's mind. And I don't say that frivolously. It's not like, you know, ask them. If you're worried, if you thought about hurting yourself, ask them. It's not going to be something that you suggest and start answering their questions. It's never too soon to start. Where do babies come from? Okay? You know, that question that we're all asked when our kids are about two, and there, by the way, um, Mommy Laid an Egg, great book. Uh, very helpful. But, but, you know, at times like that, we'll say, you know, we just make up some ridiculous kind of statement and hope it goes away, you know? And, and as we do that, the anxiety associated with the next time that question comes, comes up, and will come up again, is going to be greater and greater and greater. I'm still waiting for my dad to explain to me, because um, he never got over that anxiety. But the more we avoid a topic, the more anxious we are about it. So if your kid's old enough to ask it, you're, you can answer it. You don't have to answer it in tons of gory detail, you know, but you have to provide them an honest response. If you avoid it, it's going to be a lot more stressful. Deal with our demons as well. How do we keep our alligators at bay? Well, we have to take care of ourselves. Exercise, nutrition, getting enough uh, water to drink, sleep. You know, and if you look, it's fascinating. If you look at how many hours of sleep the average person got, uh, you know, in 1900, I think, sorry, you're yawning, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I got you too, sorry. Um, but I can't, it's, it's amazing, it's like 12 hours or something like that, because we didn't have, not everyone had electricity, and you know, so staying up past dark, it involved candles and whatever, and, and people really went to bed a lot early, earlier and slept a lot more. Now what's competing for our, uh, for our time? Well, we all have email and Blackberries and, 
you know, there's the, the, the internet and all that, that that holds, and round the clock TV. I remember, you know, when, you know, again, I'm showing my age, but I was sure. Um, we had like two TV channels, three if you counted, uh, you know, the French channel, um, and, um, and at about uh, 12 o'clock, there was a test pattern in the next six and a half hours. So you don't get that anymore. Here's a goal that I ask each and every one of you to set for yourselves. Have one meaningful conversation each day. With ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> one meaningful conversation each day, and if the word fine appears anywhere in the conversation, it's not meaningful. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Tells you nothing. Okay. What's that? How's your day? Okay. Yes, yeah, okay, that's right. So, but if you say to them, tell me about the best part of your day, they can't say okay to that, can they? Yeah. Yeah, they'll try, yeah. Or tell me about the worst part of your day. But don't log don't, don't them one where they can say fine or okay. By the way, it doesn't have to be with your kids that you have this meaningful conversation. It can be with a coworker, with your spouse, with, you know, with whomever. But, but one meaningful conversation a day. Okay. This is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I don't want to go over it in any great detail here, except to say that at the bottom we have the very basic physiological needs. Breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, uh, homeostasis, and excretion. These are just basic human functions, okay? Why do I mention this? Um, I, you heard earlier I've done a lot of disaster response, um, and one of the hardest things for me is when I know I'm going to a disaster, but I'm not going right away. Because, in fact, if I go in as a psychologist and start talking about their stress and trauma and things like that, before all those basic needs are met, not only do I do no good, I actually make things worse. Okay? We need to make sure that we take care of the basics here. We know that with kids, this is why we have breakfast programs in school. Go figure, trigonometry isn't all that important to a kid who hasn't had breakfast and is really, really hungry. You think from an evolutionary point of view, what's important? Okay, Pythagorean theorem, or surviving and getting some food. We have to take care of our own basic needs in this as well. Okay, and last of all... <laughs> <laughs> so when we need to, we'll talk with someone who can help us as well. It's funny, we have this whole, you know, this whole notion that asking for help is a sign of weakness. And for every person who comes in and, and, and tell, talks with me about some issue that they're, they're confronting, there's a bunch more out there that aren't talking about it and pretending everything's fine. Tell me who's got courage, who's got strength of those two people. I know I'm biased, but I'll tell you who I, I think it is. It's a person who's willing to talk about these issues. The other thing is that we stigmatize mental health by not talking about it. Just like all those other issues I said, as we avoid them, we become more anxious about them. Okay, where do babies come from? Same thing happens with mental health. Okay? If your family and all of our families, by the way, it's not us and them, those with families with good mental health and those without, them. every family has its story. You may not know it, but we all do. Okay? And if you do know it, it's time to talk about it with your kids. Hey, you know what? Yeah, that aunt you have that, that uh, you know, has the cameras going in the bathroom and things like that, that's not normal. That's not okay. And she has mental illness. And she needs to get help. Okay? Um, and it may be a little bit late. She's, you know, she may be not that keen. But in our family, we talk about mental illness, and in our family, if we do experience something like that, just like if we have a physical illness, we're going to get some help for it. Okay? The three R's that I want to talk about with family functioning, routine, ritual, and ridiculous. Okay, routine, we know that with babies, they do very well. If we read them a bedtime story, we give them a little bath first, brush their teeth if they have any. <laughs> um, you know, uh, uh, it, uh, we may say prayers if that's important to us culturally and religiously. Um, you know, and what does that do? It gears the brain to go to bed. Well, guess what? As we get older, we still need that. Okay, playing World of Warcraft until twelve o'clock midnight isn't the same. In fact, it, it, it quite the opposite. It wires our brain up, and then these kids try to go to bed, and they can't. We need routine. We need that predictability in getting through the day. Ritual, this is part of a collective identity or part of a continuum. It can be religious ritual or it can be Friday night pizza and a movie. Okay, but have that kind of, again, that sense of, of positive routine. That's something positive to get us through 
uh, get us through and mark, uh, you know, points of demarcation within our week. And then the ridiculous, the ability to laugh. Okay, and let's start with ourselves, because let's face it, we're not perfect in all of this, and we are going to make mistakes, and that's the second greatest lesson I learned as a parent, not just to say sorry, but to laugh at myself as well. A final word, don't be your child's best friend. A best friend will never say to you, you know what, I don't think you should party tonight, because I think your boyfriend's a bit of a creep. And I'm a little worried about what, what might happen. <laughs> right? Or your best friend isn't going to say to you, you know what, I, I don't think you should be, uh, uh, be out all weekend, because you've got a test on Monday, and you really need to work hard if you're going to get those marks up. Set limits with your kid. Be an advocate for what your beliefs are, but don't assume they'll be the same as your children's. Get involved with your kids' lives. Um, uh, Dr. Norris talked about the importance of sitting down as a family and eating meals together. Okay, this is something, again, that, that when you talk about homework, I want you to do. Go home and, and make a point. Not seven nights a week. That might be totally unrealistic. But every, every week, you've got to have several nights when you're, you're sitting down as a family. Okay? I was so proud my daughter plays uh, uh, soccer and, and was off at a tournament out of town. And they went in for, for supper at a restaurant. And you know how we used to have uh, jukeboxes in the, in the booths? They had televisions. And she looked and she went, that must be for the families who don't know how to talk when they sit down and eat. You know? I, th I wasn't there when she said it. I just got it back, that back from her coach, who's, who's really quite family oriented. And I thought, ooh, must be doing something. <laughs> um, and pick your battles. Never. Okay. And remember, uh, an optimist will be wrong just as often as a pessimist, but will have a whole lot more fun doing so. <laughs> this isn't just kind of some, some cute little uh, uh, way to end the presentation. I really truly believe this. You think about the people that you enjoy, that if you have the toughest day at work, or you have the toughest day in your life, who are the ones that you want to be around? And they're the people who, where you get that sense of optimism and that sense of, you know what, whatever happens, we're going to get through this together. And I will say just one more brief unpaid political announcement. We've seen a huge surge in terms of demand in, in dealing with uh, children and youth's mental health. health. Uh, so as we go into this election, the, the current government promised $257 million. You might want to ask your candidates if this is important to you, if they intend to honor the current government's commitment, um, and if they'll make sure it's done sort of systematically so we're, we're meeting needs in different areas. And I apologize for throwing that at the end. If it puts anyone off, it's not on behalf of any political party at all. I just think those are important questions to ask. Mm -hmm. So that finishes uh, the formal part of my presentation.